Hello, and welcome to Algebra 2, Chapter 9.5, and today we're going to discuss the addition and subtraction of rational expressions and then also complex fractions. So starting out with uh, remembering how to add and subtract fractions, if they have, well, they have to have a common denominator. So if they start with a common denominator, there's no pre-work to do. You just um, add it or subtract the numerators and you keep the denominator. So for our first one here, we have subtraction. <clears throat> and so remember, if they already have a common denominator, you keep that. You do not add or subtract the de denominators. And on the top, we're going to subtract. So we're going to have 3 minus 7, which is negative 4. And then that does reduce. So we're going to have negative 2 over x. So if we have a binomial on the bottom, that doesn't change anything. If they have a common denominator, so we're going to add the tops. Now, the tops are not like terms, so we're just going to leave it 3x plus 6, because you can't actually combine those, over x minus 4. And remembering back what we did when we were simplifying rational expressions, um, if this can be reduced at all, so for instance, um, you can pull a 3 out of the top, now, that does not help me reduce it at all. So both of these are correct answers. Uh, people tend to go with this one if it doesn't reduce, but if you factored it, you can go with the other one as well. They both mean the same thing. So what happens if we don't have a common denominator? So the deal is, you know, this is a 6x cubed and this is a 3x cubed. Some people might say, well, like, you know, times that one by 2. And you don't really want to get into that part because, you know, then how do I, how do, I do this? Because you can't add to the top and the bottom. You have to multiply to the top and the bottom. If you remember back um, from when you very first started adding and subtracting fractions, if you have um, 3 fourths plus, let's say you have um, 7 ninths, right? And I want to add these together. You don't do plus 5 plus 5 to make that be a 9. That doesn't work because 3 fourths is not the same as 8 ninths. Okay? You have to multiply to make them be the same. And so we have to do the same thing where now that we have polynomials. We have to multiply. But first what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to factor. So 3x cubed can't be factored. Okay, so the other side looks like we have a 3x squared in common. So if we pull out a 3x squared, we're left with 2x plus 1. Make sure that's right. So that's 6x cubed plus 3x squared. Okay. So then if you want to look, okay, so they both have a 3. Got that part. And as far as this x, we have an x cubed and an x squared. On the right-hand side, it needs another x. So we're going to times it by an x on the bottom, and whenever you multiply the bottom by, you have to multiply the top by. So that's going to make it be right there. That's my x cubed, okay? And then I have this 2x plus 1 that's only on the right. So guess what the left-hand side needs? It needs a 2x plus 1. So now if we look at this, uh, left-hand side is actually going to be 8x plus 4, because you're multiplying 4 times that whole binomial, over 2x plus 1 times 3x cubed, plus, on the right-hand side, we have x squared over, I'm just going to write it in the same order, there's a 2x plus 1, and then there's a 3x cubed. And now they have a common denominator. So we add the tops, and I'm going to write it in descending order. Nothing there actually combines. Add the top, keep the bottom, and I'm just going to rewrite it here. And then going back to if this simplifies, you need to simplify it. So if I'm going to try to factor the top, I'm looking at 4. And there's no way that with a 1 and a 4 or a 2 and a 2, I'm going to ever make an 8. So that does not factor. That, then, is your answer. Okay, so let's look at another one, and this time we have subtraction. So the first thing is you have to factor the, the uh, denominators. So this is going to be an x plus 3x plus 3, 
And in this case, instead of writing an x plus 3 squared, I like to write it out so I see both of them, but it's personal preference there. Uh, difference of squares, x plus 3x minus 3. Okay, so what does the left-hand side need that the right-hand side has? Well, it needs an x minus 3, and we multiply top and bottom. Okay, what does the right-hand side need that the, the left-hand side has? has? It needs another x plus 3, because they need to have two x plus 3s. Okay, and if you can already tell that they have common denominators, you don't have to rewrite them with a common denominator. You can just go straight into the math of, of doing this here. So you have to multiply these together, foiling. So that's x squared, and then x minus 3x is a negative 2x minus 3. Now, the deal with subtraction is it gets a little difficult. You can do minus parenthesis and write what the other side is and then distribute that minus sign. Or what I like to do, especially in the case of it just being a monomial right there, if you consider that a negative 1 and distribute a negative 1, then you've already accounted for your minus sign. So we have minus x minus 3. Combine like terms here real quick. We get this. Okay, and then you might look to see if that factors. And I don't think with 1 and 6 or 2 and 3 that that factors. So put that back over our denominator that we kind of long ago dropped off, but that's okay. And at the moment, if you want to write that as 1 binomial squared, you can, and there's the other one. And so that's our answer. So the next thing that we want to look at is what's called a complex fraction. And so a complex fraction is just a fraction over a fraction. And there's two ways to, um, to work these out. I like the division method because this bar in the middle means to divide. And how do you divide fractions? You multiply by the reciprocal. So if I just multiply these out, then I can get to my answer. But the deal is, it's how do I divide a fraction over a fraction. And at the moment, on the bottom, I happen to have two fractions. So first thing is, you have to simplify the top and the bottom, which is why we just talked about adding and subtracting fractions. So over to the side, I would say we need to work this out. Now, they are already factored, the bottoms. You, you can't factor them anymore. So to give them a common denominator, this side needs an x plus 1. Sorry, that says x plus 1. So x plus 1, top and bottom. This side needs an x minus 4, top and bottom. So then up here we have x plus 1. And then over here, and it's plus sign in the middle, we have plus 3x minus 12, which is going to be, <coughs> excuse me, 4x minus 11 over x plus 1 x minus 4. So if I come back up to the top equals, we still have this on top, and now on bottom we have one fraction. So you want it to be one fraction there. Okay, so how do I divide fractions? Well this means that I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the second one, so times Okay, and now you're back to multiplying and dividing fractions, and you cross out what they have in common, and you write what's left. That's a 4x minus 11, and there's your answer. So it really combines 9, 3, and 9, 4, I think. It, it really combines uh, multiplying and dividing fractions with adding and subtracting fractions. So let's look at one more, and you know, the two examples I picked out, they both have a sum or difference on the bottom, and it could happen on the top and the bottom, um, but you have to have one fraction, so the top is already one fraction, so I need the bottom to be one fraction. And I just always work it out over to the side. Okay, so uh, this side needs an x minus 1. And this side just needs an x. Okay, and that is x times x minus 1 there. Don't, parentheses, well, they're handy in the fact 
but you really need to make sure you remember that a fraction bar is a grouping symbol. So when you put that x out there, you're not just multiplying it by that first x, you have to distribute it to both. So that is going to be 4x plus x minus 1 on top. So we go ahead and simplify 5x minus 1 over, and I'm not going to distribute that because there's great chances that you're going to have to factor it back out anyway. So this is 2 over x minus 1 over, and actually if you wanted to skip this step and go ahead and write it as multiplication, you could. So this is the top fraction times the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. And cross out anything that crosses out, so not much in this case, and our answer then 2x over 5x minus 1. Alright, so there's an intro into adding, subtracting, rational expressions, and then also dealing with complex rational expressions. Let me know if you have any questions, and if not, I will see you in class. Have a great day.